a lovely winter ski trip at an isolated mountain chalet. What could go wrong? Let's talk about Snow Valley. Hey everyone, it's David Stark from Watcher Pass, and I'm here to talk to you about Snow Valley, which comes to digital on March 26, 2024. It is a new indie horror thrill that follows a couple and a lovely isolated mountain chalet. What could go wrong? Well, my hot take is, I think you should watch this later. I really liked the start of this movie. I liked about the first, I don't know, 45 minutes, 50 minutes of this film. Uh, it has a really great setup, a really kind of fun cast, some really weird characters. And hey, it's got Barbara Crampton. What else could you want? But... The story does become a little bit of a mess towards the end. It has a messy turn, and there's a few things that kind of mess with the tone. So overall, I enjoyed it. I appreciated it. I liked a lot of the things that it did, but I don't think it kind of pulled off the landing. I don't think it stuck the landing like it should have. So all that being said, I'm going to tell you a little about the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like, and then really quickly go into the ending. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers in the ending section. If you don't know what happened in this movie, I would turn it off when I get there. Before that, though, I'll keep it vague. I'll keep it spoiler-free. I'll let you know when I get to those spoilers. So Snow Valley follows Heath and Laura on a lovely weekend getaway uh, to Heath's family's uh, snow chalet. It's like a 16-room manor up in the hills in Snow Valley. It is lovely. It is wonderful. Everything seems to be going well, and then some strange things start happening, as you'd expect in a horror movie. Now, what is the cause of these? Is this related to Heath's family? Is this related to something else? Is there something that no one can explain going on? Well, you have to watch the movie to find out, but this entangles both Heath and Laura and some of the friends that also come along the way. So, things I liked about this movie. The first, I love the setting. It is a great setting for this movie. You know, you got this really nice, like, cabin in the woods but it's not a cabin it's a giant chalet i don't know if it's you know movie tricks or whatnot but it seems like a really wonderful place to film it seems like a really beautiful place and it you know the, the mountains the snow really gives you a great sense of isolation it's a wonderful setting for a horror movie it's kind of the picture perfect place for a horror movie anything in the woods is usually a good spot so a beautiful snow woods is perfect Second thing I loved, I loved the music. There is some wonderful music. It's got a nice kind of like classical gothic soundtrack that fits with the mood, really kind of like puts you a little bit on edge, but also gives you kind of a sense of class, which the, the Snow Chalet also does. You know, Heath is from a wealthy family. You're expecting uh, some, he's not, he's, he doesn't act like a privileged person, but he is definitely privileged. And some of that comes out and the music helps to both set the thriller mood and the like privileged upper crust mood. And the last thing I loved, I love the characters, but I loved Ed. There's a character named Ed who comes in partway through the movie who is just so much fun. He is a giant, like, X Factor. He is out there in all the ways, but he is really, really fun to see. Tom Williamson, who played Ed, was just fantastic. Everything that came out of his mouth, I was either, like, shocked or laughing at, which is always good. It's kind of helps to lighten the mood in some of these tense horror scenes, and he was just a fun character overall. So, all that being said, things I didn't love as much. The first... It was like a ski interlude partway through that just felt like it was a very different tone. It felt almost like a different movie. I don't know if it was, it almost looked like a music video or something. It just was a, it was filmed differently. It sounded different. It just didn't really fit with the mood and it went on a little bit too long. So I was a little kind of surprised at it and it really kind of hurt it right in the middle. The second thing I didn't love, ah, the story gets to be kind of a mess. It has a really nice start, a really nice buildup, but it, it almost feels like it has too many ideas that are thrown together. It feels like this is almost like a kitchen sink type movie, which is weird because it's a 74 minute movie. It is not very long. You'd expect it to be really focused, but there's a few different things that go on and it feels like this movie just couldn't decide on what it wanted to do. So it threw it all together and it kind of hurts it. And the last thing I didn't love uh that it's there's a messy turn part way through it's kind of related to the very the different ideas again you have a few ideas and then there's this like messy turn to kind of resolve it all it doesn't feel earned it doesn't feel like a, any sort of logical progression of what we were doing so this turn coupled with kind of a messy story really hurt the last bit for me like i said i loved the first like 50 minutes of it it was a lot of fun it was like a nice tense fresh indie film the last bit the kind of conclusion didn't really do it for me so all that being said, I still enjoyed it. I still like that the Snow Valley was made and I still like the characters and the setting. So I would check it out later, maybe, you know, rent it at home, wait for it to come to streaming. But if you do see it, it comes to digital on March 26, 2024. And if you check it out, let me know what you thought. Let me know what you liked and didn't like. I'd love to hear it. Now, I'm going to really quickly get into the ending because I want to talk about this messy turn and whatnot. So um, there will be spoilers. If you don't want to know what happens in this movie, though, turn it off because, like I said, there will be spoilers. So in Snow Valley... 
Heath and Laura are at this this chalet. They've been dating for a year, but Heath is apparently smitten. He proposes to Laura in this very cute way. He like gets a pizza delivered from the spot that they met at in California. He gets it delivered to Snow Valley with a ring inside of it, like a, a ring box inside the pizza. Probably not a good idea. Like that was probably really greasy and gross, but it's sweet. Laura says yes, even though she's only known him for a year. And now... They're a happy couple about to be engaged and some of their friends come along. Some of their friends who are actually Heath's friends and Laura's friends don't come, but Heath's friends show up. Another couple shows up that are a little bit awkward, but still enjoyable. And then Ed shows up the, this like X factor, a uh, friend of Heath's family. Uh, well, his, I guess, parents are friends with Heath's parents. So Ed has been there all the time, but he is crazy. He has a lot of fun, but he is crazy. He pops on. And he just throws out all this stuff. It's really fun to see. Like, he brought a gun to this, which is weird. Like, why would you bring a gun to a ski uh, resort? Hey, it's Ed. He brought drugs. He brought a full, like, suckling pig for dinner because he wanted to bring something. Uh, and he gets, he's very aggressive sometimes. And he's very kind of standoffish and weird sometimes. He is a lot of fun. But as this is going on, we also learn a little bit more about this snow chalet. Now, there are a lot of, like, mining artifacts here from when this place i guess was a mine they built the the mountain on top of a mine and so there's a lot of like a reverence for the mining industry that's here so these mines are like a big part of this valley but apparently the mines then were turned into a sanitarium i guess they put a bunch of patients in the sanitarium they built in the mines and then someday there was an explosion that happened that killed a ton of the patients so now, there is this thought, you know, that maybe this place is haunted either by people that died in the mines mining or uh, the people that died in the sanitarium. And also, there is this kind of strange housekeeper that is around named Ellen, who is played by Barbara Crampton. She uh, shows up randomly and apparently has been at the house the whole time. I guess she lives in a, like a house, like a like a, a small house next to the house. And she has been taking care of this place for years. So she also shows up. She's a little bit set in her ways. And so she is another kind of factor in here. And then when some weird stuff happens, you don't really know what's going on. You don't know if it's the ghost, if it's Ellen, if it's something else. You don't know. But some weird stuff does start to happen. So all these friends show up. Like I said, Ed is getting a little weird. But the other thing that's happening is there is a storm brewing and it closes the mountain roads. So everyone here is stuck here uh, with this strange stuff going on. Now, like I said, the night does start getting more strange. Eventually uh ed, one of the one of the friends confronts ed and says that he wasn't invited Ed is like distraught about this he thought he was invited he thought he was invited to everything he showed up thinking that he was invited even though uh he never told him he was just like oh you know that's just an oversight so he gets sad and goes to his room and then some weird things start to happen so the weird stuff starts happening first there's like some minor ghosts not, not like minor ghosts like miners who are mining the ground ghosts that appear and they like hit one of the friends and then like disappear and they kind of show up throughout it's really strange they don't really seem to have a purpose except for some jump scares because they aren't the cause of the weirdness even though they are there and weird the power also goes out and an axe is missing a, a, a old axe that was part of a display for the miners is missing they think maybe ed has it ed has a personality that kind of goes up and down they think maybe he got depressed and now he has this axe and he's like playing a trick on them. They hope, they hope he's not going crazy, but who knows? Then we, and we also hear a little boy laughing and then we start hearing gunshots. And this is concerning because that gun that Ed brought, they took it and put it in the safe. So first we go check out the safe. The safe is open. The gun is missing. Well, only a few people have that combination. Who could have done it? You don't know, but they are worried that now Ed has an axe and a gun and an axe to grind. So a lot is going on. They are they regroup and start running from the gunshots and this sound of a little boy laughing. They're like, okay, that's weird. They get to a movie, they get to a movie room, and a strange, creepy video starts showing on the screen about the old miners, these miners that were like ghosts now, and these miners that were part of this mine. It starts showing up. And I loved Ed's reaction here because they're in a life-threatening situation. They're hiding in the movie room. This creepy video starts playing as like, ooh, movie night. And he sits down and like starts watching. This is when Ellen, the housekeeper, shows up and says to Heath, your brother has escaped. And you're like, what? Like, never had a brother? Like, what is going on? And this is when Ellen like accuses Laura of messing this up. Like, she is a child psychologist. She is studying like child psychic powers. And apparently Heath's half-brother, Brian, was conceived when Laura and 
uh, Heath's dad had an affair, had a child. That child, you know, couldn't be acknowledged because that would be a scandal, I guess. And so the child has been living in this house in like a separate area since then. Apparently that child also has like psychic powers, I guess. So it is brought it is Heath's brother. He has been living here and like Laura, I guess, because she is studying psychic children since that and I guess has a connection with him. So that was the impetus for Brian escaping, I guess. Like I said, it's kind of a mess. Uh, this leads Laura to run away from Ellen because Ellen accuses Laura of messing this up and grabbing the axe. Remember that axe? Well, apparently Ellen has it. I can see, I think she has a pick, something like that. She starts chasing Laura. Laura goes into this like weird ghost tunnel thing. It's like she's transported back to the mines or like spider webs and like red lights. And I think the minor ghosts are there too, but she is running from Ellen. Eventually she hides in a room and she like looks through the keyhole and the minor ghosts like spook her, which again, is weird. Like these minor ghosts don't seem to have any purpose other than to like jump scares and maybe some more atmosphere. It felt like a little messy because you expected them to be doing something, but they, they aren't. Apparently it's all like Ellen and her psychic child. So in this room, she, I guess, senses Brian and she speaks to Brian and says that, uh, you know, she wants, she's there to help him. She wants to help. She's there to save him. And she just needs to trust her. Uh, Brian trusts her. He goes and shows her his room. It's this little like small room with chains. Unfortunately, not like real looking chains. They look like, I don't know, like, uh, like cheap chains you buy at Home Depot and some pictures of Ellen that apparently Brian psychically drew. It is a sad place. It's a sad place for the boy. Brian is like, you know, model hair. He's got long hair. It looks like he hasn't had like a shower in a long time. He, and he shows Laura this place. She takes it in. She is shocked. But then Ellen is sneaking up behind her with a pickaxe. And she's about to kill Laura. And Brian says, Mama, no. And he holds a gun up to his mama, which again, I don't think this was that. Like, this is a little boy. I don't think he would hold a gun to his mama, but he does. He wants to save Laura. And so Ellen is kind of like shocked. Brian pulls the trigger. The gun apparently is out. It doesn't go off. And you think, uh oh, now Ellen is going to take her revenge on Laura. But that is when Ed shows up and he says, Chin up, little man. I got two on this girl as well. And he has two shotguns that he apparently brought in his coat. Somehow snuck that through security along with his other gun, his cocaine, and his pig. Hey, why not? Look, it's Ed. I bet he can do things like that. I, I think Ed shoots her. I think, I don't remember if Ellen lives, but this apparently ends the relationship between Heath and Laura because Heath has a little brother that he's kept locked away and this like weird family and a whole bunch of skulls in the closet. So she throws her ring at Heath, hugs Brian, and then in the mirror we see these minor ghosts again. Again, strange. Like they seem like they should have a, like a part in this movie, but they don't. They're just there to add like a supernatural element to a movie that, doesn't need to be supernatural. I mean, it has psychic elements, so I guess that's paranormal. But again, it, it feels messy. It feels like there are too many thoughts here. It feels like the minors could have been an interesting thing. The paranormal child could have been an interesting thing. The, uh, you know, crazy housekeeper could have been an interesting thing. But altogether, they didn't really work out. And then we get like a flashback scene, which is supposed to be a flashback, but there's no indication it's a flashback. So it's Laura talking to her sister about how, when they were young, asking if she had like psychic abilities. Apparently, Laura has had psychic abilities since she was a kid, which is how she was able to communicate with Brian, which is also why she is studying these kids. And her sister is like, I don't know what you're talking about, but hey, let's go to a bar. There's this person I want you to meet. And that is where she met Heath. It's a very weird scene because it doesn't key you in that it's a flashback. It just kind of like happens. And then we get to see Laura presently. There, Laura is in like a lab coat. She is, and some other doctors are observing Brian. Brian looks happy. He's got short hair. He seems well, well cared for there, kind of observing him. Uh, and one of the doctors asks Laura, how, she's do how is he doing? And then Laura just smiles and that's it. That's the movie. Like I said, it has a really nice start, a really good base that just kind of doesn't really come through at the end. But it has some really nice ideas. It has like, a, you know, a good core. Just doesn't really stick the landing. So that is Snow Valley. Like I said, it comes to digital on March 26, 2024. And uh, if you do check it out, let me know what you thought. Let me know what you liked and didn't like. I'd love to hear it. And thanks so much for watching. If you like this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.